participate in those things, but uh, that's not the intention of this group. So again, welcome here. Um, and I'm just going to kind of hand it off to Allison, who's on my right. So Allison, if you want to introduce yourself, that'd be great. Oh, I'm the only Allison on this call. That's <laughs> um, So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Allison Kittinger. I am the brand new uh, UW-Madison Open Source Program Office Manager. I actually technically don't start until the end of this month. So this is kind of a sneak preview. <laughs> I'm here because I'm really excited to to start and to to get in on these conversations about um, open source and measuring impact and things like that. So it's nice to meet everyone. I look forward to working with you and collaborating with you in the future. Uh, and we do too. And I'll just say it, Wisconsin alum, my daughter's getting her PhD in English at Wisconsin, so on Wisconsin. Yeah, no, I, I visited for the first time for my interview. It's a beautiful place. I was there yeah. during game time. It was super fun. <laughs> oh, that's the best. Um, so, Sean, why don't you go next now that you're, we know you're from Wisconsin. Good yeah, to I'm you, from Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, Matt and I are a couple of the co-founders of the Chaos Project. I'm a professor of computer science, so this is engaged field research for myself. I do a lot of work with the Augur project and the Chaos Project as well. So, and I've worked closely with the scientific open source software community for the last three or four years, depending how one counts pandemic years. Could be 90 years. <laughs> All right. Um, how about Megan? Megan Forbes, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Also a badger. So, <laughs> My MLS in Wisconsin, so we have a theme here. I know so. we have a theme exactly. Wow, and I would feel like I would really like to be, you know, out on the terrace right now. That looks awesome. Um, <clears throat> currently, I'm located just outside Boston, um, but I'm the open source program manager, uh, the program manager for the open source program office uh, at Hopkins um, in Baltimore. Um, so I'm I'm remote, but get down there uh, fairly often. Um, but I'm also pretty new, but Allison, so no, I'm no longer the newest OSPO manager on the call. So maybe Zach might have me seen in you. So I'm like six weeks in. Um, prior to this, I led a project called It Takes a Village, which is about open source sustainability um, for cultural and scientific heritage. If you haven't checked it out, I'll drop a link in. Um, and that's me. Uh, well, Megan, it's it's great to have you here and great to see you also uh, in Lee. Um, how about Zach? You want to introduce yourself? Are you a Badger? Unfortunately, no. I'm feeling left out. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. My name is Zach Chandler, and I head up the brand new, uh, this is a theme, I suppose, um, OSPO at Stanford University. Um, so there's a lot of open source work happening here, but um, and I, there are some good indicators about healthy communities, but we have no idea how common that is or really what all the projects are. Um, just, you know, getting our hands around this as a community is brand new to us. So I'm really looking forward to learning from you all. Right on. Thanks to have you here. Nice to have you here, Zach. Um, how about Elizabeth? You wanna introduce yourself? Sure, I also, am not. Also known as chaos, the whole <laughs> yeah. chaos community. I am the whole community. No, I am not uh, at a uh, university. I am at chaos. I'm the chaos community manager. So if anybody has any questions about chaos, you can't find something, you don't know where to go, just hit me up on Slack. And I will also drop a link to the Slack in the chat. So um, if you're not in there, you should be because we're awesome and we're fun to hang out with. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Angela. So, hi, continuing with the new OSPO director theme. I am the uh, executive director for IT innovation at the University of Texas at Austin, and I also direct the OSPO here. And I'm looking very forward to working with all of you. Nice to have you back, Angela. Um, let's see, Tom. I see you and Tom Hughes. Hi everyone, my name is Tom Hughes. Uh, I'm the uh, community manager uh, for the OSPO at Carnegie Mellon. So I work for Saeed um, and also just to echo uh, Zach's sentiments from earlier, also trying to wrap our head around just the sheer volume of projects, where the projects exist, what the health of the projects are. So that that's that's a question that very much occupies my time. But so I'm, I'm at Carnegie Mellon in, in Pittsburgh. Great. Uh, thanks, Tom. Um, how about Claire? Claire, I don't know if you have your microphone. 
even though you're around. We I will. I wasn't going to be able oh, to. can't talk right now. All right, no problem, Claire. So Claire Dillon, she's awesome. <laughs> she's been joining us for a long time. So she will type. Okay, awesome. Uh, Don, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I am the Director of Data Science for the Chaos Project. I'm based in uh, in the UK, and um, I'm also on the board of the Chaos Project. And then I do I do other th other things as well. So I'm on the Open UK board, and I'm a co-chair of the CNCF Contributor Strategy Technical Advisory Group. So I have lots of lots of fingers and lots of pots and lots of hats, I guess. Don just joined as the Director of Data Science. Gosh, August. August. Yeah. <laughs> so very recently. So yeah. Yeah. Before that, I was in VMware's open source program office. Um, but the chaos gig's my dream job. So I, I left VMware to join chaos. Yay. And should note that you've been with chaos since the beginning as well. Yes. So very true. <laughs> almost almost yeah. since the beginning. I've actually been using the tools that later became part of the chaos project for uh more than a decade. So I have a yeah, long history with the metrics and chaos project. I think Kevin should go oh. next because he was just speaking up. Yeah, Kevin, you're up. You did that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, Kevin Lombard, I'm a computer science professor at Creighton University. Uh, so I've been working with Matt and Sean uh, for a while. Matt was my PhD advisor, actually. Uh, so I've, I've been with Chaos uh, since the beginning as well. Uh, I'm also I'm co-lead on uh, one of the, uh, the Chaos working groups uh, and uh, the mission of that particular working group is called Common, is actually to uh, define metrics and models. So uh, I'm, if if you are interested or want help in defining metrics, I'm I'm here to to listen to that, and and hopefully I can take those ideas and and turn them into usable metrics and models for you, or or the working group can, not just me. Right on. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Kyle. Um, hi, I'm uh, Kyle Cranmer. I'm uh, the director of the Data Science Institute at UW Madison and uh, the PI for the OSPO at uh, at UW Madison. So very happy to have Allison uh, joining, and we're uh, in the process of trying to hire an outreach specialist also to join that. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, well happy to be involved in this. And uh, uh, I don't know, I, I'm also involved in some large like. Uh, you know, uh, scientific software projects. So I'm also kind of curious from uh, that point of view, how we could use some of these tools and have a few different projects going on with NumFocus, trying to kind of get other data science institutes to uh, sort of uh, walk the walk uh, <laughs> and contribute to open source more. Um, so trying to, uh, a few different things there that are kind of part of my strategy with the data science institute here. What was the comment with NumFocus? Because we've worked with folks from NumFocus as well. So. Oh yeah, so that, that there's a sort of uh, you know uh, two or three projects. Sean, Sean's involved in one of them. One one was that I at some point I wanted to give some money to NumFocus from the Data Science Institute, and that wasn't really possible because they don't present something like a membership model. So I partnered with them to create a membership model uh, and sort of wrote what the benefits could be so that different academic units could contribute uh, in a kind of nonprofit status, and then. As part of that, there was an idea of creating a uh, some sort of pledge that academic units would take to become part of this kind of uh, numfocus academic consortium. And so, uh, so the the uh, ads of the Academic Data Science Alliance, which is a bunch of different groups uh, uh, that like university, you know, uh, data science groups, uh, convened a committee to try to draft what this pledge might be. So Sean was part of that, and so we we created a. A website which I can share, which is uh, the very first version of it, where uh, basically it's like a registry where different you know units, uh, like campus units, would say like this is our pledged open source. We're going to do the following sets of things, um, and so that was uh, kind of step one, and that was announced at SciPy this summer. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, right. That's that's pretty cool. Thanks, Kyle. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, Bill. Thanks for being here. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hey all. Um, so Bill Brown, I'm the head of the OSPO at uh, JHU. Um, I, you may have already heard from from Megan, so really uh, excited to have her come on and, and start really doing a lot of the day-to-day -day work uh, in, in the OSPO. Um, 
So I, I run a, a team that is essentially a dev shop uh, with the digital research and curation center in, uh, in the, the libraries at, at Hopkins. So the OSPO is one of those, those things. And so um, just really looking to build a foundation here. A lot of the work that, that went on uh, previously at, at Hopkins with Saeed was, was um, a little bit uh, scattershot, I'll say. Uh, and there's, there's, I think, a real need to, to take on some of the conversations and some of the, the considerations that you know, all of you have raised around how do we ensure that the, uh, the academic work happening around uh, open source is supported well? How do we know? How do we make sure we know what's going on, and uh, I can provide the resources that are necessary? So that's that's kind of where we are at the moment. All right, thanks for that, uh, Bill. Uh, Troy, I don't know if you're able to unmute. Yes. You are. Um. So I am a student at University of Missouri. I am working with uh, Professor Goggins on Augur. So that I'm just kind of I'm I'm new blood, to be frank. But I'm hoping very that, new within yeah, the month. Yeah, I'm hoping that this will be an enlightening uh, meeting for me to absorb via osmosis to see what's kind of all about. Everything's all about. Well, thanks for being here, Troy. And just so yeah. people know, Augur is one of the tools in the chaos project it's one of the pieces of software that helps in the deployment of metrics and metrics models so we have these definitions of metrics and metrics models and then if if those metrics or metrics models are based on trace data we have a couple of different tools in the chaos project augur being one of them that helps kind of bring those models forward okay uh mike you want to introduce yourself we have so many new people here this is <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's okay with everybody that we're doing intro. So yeah, I'll try to be quick. Um, so hi, I'm Mike. Uh, I work for Rochester Institute of Technology. I'm the associate director of Open at RIT, which is just another one of these open program offices. Uh, we do a lot of things, but like many of the academic institutions, we're particularly interested in the work that chaos um is facilitating through this working group, thinking about how to effectively measure contribution to academic open work and impact via that. Um, we've worked with Augur a little bit. We've worked with Grimoire Lab a little bit. We built some of our own tools as well. Um, so we're very interested in this sort of stuff. Thanks for being here, Mike. Uh, let's see, Vinod, you wanna say hi? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Vinod Ahuja. Uh, I'm a maths student also, a PhD student. I've recently graduated from University of Nebraska, Omaha, and moved to Florida and joined as an assistant professor at Florida Gulf Coast University. And I've been uh, associated with Kyo since very beginning. Uh, for recent two months, I have not been much involved. So now I'm trying to catch up and come back to all the meetings that I used to attend. But due to transition, it was like too much going on. So now I'm catching up on the things. So. Start, starting I, a new professor job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. <laughs> All right. Yeah, glad we're back. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Thank um, you. Faye, are you able to unmute? Hi. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Fangu. Uh, yeah, you can call me Cherry. I'm the PI for the Oscar in Georgia Tech. So we just have a new, we just got a newly funded. Uh, so now we are in the stage of setting up. Finally, we get an uh, official announcement this week to the campus about this office. And uh, we sort out the work tech issue so that we can start hiring students assistance for this uh, work. Yeah, glad cool. to be here to learn more. Yeah, thank you for being here. It's really great. Um, and Yiga, I don't know if you can unmute right now. Just say hi. All right. So uh, Yiga, oh, go ahead, Yiga. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to all the new people. Uh, my name is Yiga, and I am a liaison officer with Chaos. And what I do is basically take all of the discussions from here and bring them to the other um, group just so that we can put it together and merge stuff together. So yes, you're welcome. 
Thanks for being here, Yiga. All right. Um, and I, I will say too, just if, for those of you that don't know, the Chaos Project has been um, funded for a long time by Josh Greenberg at Sloan. So I know that this would be very happy to see, just take a picture because <laughs> he'd be very happy to see this. So, um, so that's photo. great. Yeah, group photo. Um, so that that's cool. So um, honestly, with all the new people, we can we can take this in a variety of different directions. So um, we have been working on kind of framing out what um, functions around open source are within a university, and I can show you that framework that they that we've been kind of working on over the course of the last several months. You know what I mean? And the it's a series of functions, I'll talk about it highly, with goals, and then the goals kind of feed the functions. And only then do we really think about the metrics that can help provide insight. I can show you that, but it'll kind of structure things a little bit, or I can kind of have open it up and kind of listen to you talk openly. You kind of see what I'm saying here? It's like a research thing. I don't want to overly bias everybody <laughs> in this process. Framework overview. I got I got one for framework yeah, overview, one and that would be enough. Framework for me. overview. <laughs> All right, let me let me pull that up. So I'm gonna share my screen here in just a second. Oh, and um, of course, it's also important to know if uh, people grow plants in their house. <laughs> that's that's always an important part of our our meetings to learn a little bit about each other. And I see some cats eat some plants. So, <laughs> so no. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he'll, like one of my cats will even go for cacti. So I got to <laughs> oh, <laughs> limit my plants. <laughs> Remedial and, education required there. Uh, and I think Tom is going to win the most number of plants at 50. So Tom... <laughs> <laughs> you win 50 50 takes it so <laughs> right on and over six feet tall have you had to get rid of any just as they outgrow your ceilings yeah that's actually cut down i used to have somewhere around like 80 and i got rid of all of my smaller ones because they're they okay. really to take up too much space right on right on uh, okay, so um, okay, so I'm going to scroll down to the framework. These are some things we can talk about a little bit later. Um, so the the framework, if you go down into the meeting minutes, it's I should put page numbers on here, but it's at the underneath the triangle. So if you take a look at that, so this is something like I said, we've been developing over a while, and I'll give you kind of some some overview of how we're thinking about this. And I do have a, somebody who's helped me with design. So this doesn't have to look like it's from the like early 90s, but it'll look a little bit more attractive here in the future. Um, but we have a couple of different research functions that we've been kind of trying to identify. And you can see those across the top. So the function of being research excellence, translation, education, and really community management is that last one. Um, these functions, there could certainly be more, so this could get wider, um, but this is kind of where we're at at the moment. So then within each one of these functions, what we have here are our goals. So with respect to, say, research excellence, it's to improve research reproducibility and replicability, or research translation to identify research and social uh, research and social impact, or identify um, university and researcher benefits. So these would be the goals that would kind of speak to translation, all right? Same with education, same with distribution and, and community management. So this isn't meant to be a metric, or I'm sorry, this isn't meant to be a maturity model either, such that any university OSPO or, um, university focusing on open source functions would necessarily do all of these things. It's meant to be a way for you to identify the things that you are doing or that you might wanna focus on immediately, okay? Does anybody have, I'll continue on, but does anybody have any questions or just kind of reaction to kind of what you're seeing here immediately? We build these things based on feedback from all you, from all you, because you do this on the daily, and we're just trying to capture your narrative 
to to bring this back for you and support you. We got functions on top. Yeah, Mike. Um, you know, I, this might be a uh, like not not worth getting into, but I certainly think there are other aspects of uh, research excellence that open source contributes to having like yep. you know greater cross organizational collaboration, better For sure. more effective pooling of resources and stuff. But I don't know if that actually belongs here. Um, it could. So this could get deeper as well, Mike. If you think you know that would be another goal around research excellence. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how you're around it. So that's completely fine. Too. This isn't meant to completely constrain the conversation. Yeah. I, I can say for our office, one of the yeah. main things that we find ourselves doing is figuring out how to better and more effectively collaborate with like other stakeholders on research that's being produced here. And it's not mm -hmm. necessarily just about reproducibility, but rather creating shared artifacts and infrastructures for, you know, for instance, scientists to use uh, in a specific discipline. Um, okay. And that's what we find ourselves doing, probably more than ensuring that research is reproducible. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if I mean, if I could just add one quick thing there oh, is that uh, yeah. in some of the work that we were doing that was originally around like reproducibility and replicability at some point there was a this wasn't so much about open source specifically but there was a move to try to reframe or put a lot of emphasis on the reuse aspect of it um and i think that that reuse is somewhat similar to some of the comments that were made in terms of so and that's i don't know Okay, no, that's great. So art, like artifact reuse, artifacts being software or data, is that right? Hardware as well. Yeah. Hardware as well, okay. Yeah. But I could ima imagine that that top box that says reproducibility and replicability somehow like reuse is a, usually a pretty easy, friendly amendment there. Okay, but, okay. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Megan. Um, so right now, you know, as, as Bill mentioned, we're trying to sort of, you know, rebuild the foundation for the OSPO. Um, and as I've been talking to a lot of people, you know, people don't know what an OSPO is. They don't know what we could be doing. We're not necessarily sure what we should be doing. And so I can see this being really helpful as a way just to provide examples to people who have no idea what an OSPO is or could be. To say, you know, when, when we're like, what kind of services will be useful? And they, you know, it, that's too open of a question. Um, and so this is, a, I think, a nice way to share some examples. Like, do you need help with <laughs> improving research reproducibility? Do you need help, you know, just to sort of help them understand what kinds of things an OSPO um, could be helping with? I can see this being super helpful yeah. to me personally. Um, just in terms of, like, the conversation, who is that conversation with? So right now I um, am casting just my net. I'm, I'm like one of those awful fisher people that like throws out the net that like gets everybody. Like I'm getting tuna and dolphins and tin cans and like old bicycles, like you name it. So I'm talking to faculty. I'm talking to people who run research units. I'm talking to people who are using open source in their work. So DH librarians, you know, on up through Sure. people who have 300 github repos of you know biomedical engineering tools so right now it's super wide um okay. and so some people are really soaking in open source and some people aren't aware that they are so my audience at this point is very varied um just you know sure. and personally it's a function you know of hopkins being so massive <laughs> so okay. so we're still in the big you know we're 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 not quite narrowing yet um okay since we're still sort of getting getting our sea level okay and you could see a framework like this 
possibly helping conversations no matter where they might go. Absolutely. With Just in terms of like, community. you know, what is an OSPO? Like what, you know, what do you do? Sure. And so, you know, Where using these things that different audiences are familiar with to say like, okay, well, okay, you know, you want to teach kids how to be part of collaborative development communities. Cool. Like this is a thing we can do. You know, that's, that's a fact that we can explore. Um, and so understanding okay. what yeah. all those different facets are, I think this could be really helpful um, to, to folks to sort of see something like this in that Hopkins context. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Go yeah, ahead, uh, Simmons also has their hand raised. Yeah, just following up on what, what Megan was saying, um, I think there's a, a few conversations that we've had. I'm, I'm not sure where, it, or at least the things that people are saying or asking questions about or, or looking for, for help with that I don't see exactly whether it would fit into this kind of grouping, things like guidance around, you know, license selection. Um, you know, maybe that's fall, that falls into research translation. I guess there's there's some parts here where there it kind of crosses the boundaries of the different functions, uh, sure. like es establishing policy within the university around the use of open source, uh, things like establishing security guidance uh, for, say, you should be providing S bombs, um, you know, with with your your work. Uh, just kind of throwing out a, a few things that are top of mind uh, for me in in terms of, uh, you know, to, I guess it's it's to ask the question: to what extent are you looking for this resource to be comprehensive versus be um, be really high level? And it, it looks like it's mostly just a high, high some high level thinking. At this point, and then I assume there's some drill down that, that gets you into more of that detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's um, like the metric. And that's a, that's a good point. Um, I can respond to that, but Sean, I know you had something to say as well. Uh, I, I was going to say that um, I think one of the ways to think about this or frame these baskets is what are the stories that will would be helpful for you able for you to be able to tell with information to sort of convince people or for or help people understand the value of the University OSPO in that context. Um, like I know in Europe, S-bombs are huge right now because of the CRA that's coming down. Um, and they're huge. They're a little bit big in the US because of the Office of Science and Technology policy at the presidential office. But maybe the stories that need to be told inside the campus are different. Agreed. Um, thanks for that, Sean. Um, to, to your comment too, Bill, just about, like, I agree, this thing, it could get much wider, it could get much deeper, <laughs> it, there could go, we could add a lot of things. Um, this may sound silly, but one of the things that we always kind of talk about in the Chaos Project is just helping folks, like, move off zero. Like, we've, we've come across a lot of, not not necessarily in this group, but a lot of folks who are kind of working in an OSPO, say in a, in a corporation or thinking about open source in their community. And they really have no like bearing on where to start. And so I think a lot of our conversations fo focus on just kind of structuring that conversation to, to get people kind of pointed in the right direction. And we know that we'll never solve everything <laughs> all, ever, <laughs> no matter how hard we try. So the hope is, is that this is at least at minimum, you know, these eight goals and four functions are a positive step forward in that direction. And if we need to add things like policy, um, security risk, I, I think might need to be addressed here. Um, but things like that, yeah, we can certainly add those. So those are fair points. Um, how, actually looking at this model, how how large of a conversation is there at the university around security and risk after being at all things open the last two days, this was a kind of a hot topic, um, certainly with corporate open source program offices. Is this a big concern in the university space? Um, I'll just say, risk. Uh, in, in our role with the Data Science Institute, we have been talking to uh, the, like the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources about trying to, you know, aid them in some things. And and there, we, that conversation went into things around open source and there the issues of of uh, security were a big issue. So it's kind of, okay. in some sense, it's more like the public sector, but it hit us because 
we were trying to, uh, you know, and I can imagine that our OSPO, one of the things that we might be doing would be, you know, helping kind of partners that are not necessarily just directly the university. Okay, fair enough. Any other comments from people? Is I've just have you been catching conversations of this around your OSPOs? Because we don't necessarily have it as captured in the framework. But I, I think most of the conversations I've had around this have been looking forward to needing to comply with with government requirements mandates. Uh, okay. Sort of thinking, thinking forward along those lines, looking at the OSTP memo and and other things. Um, so don't not wanting to be caught unaware uh, with with regard to that capability um, as they as they get you know as those things get ironed out. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Um, okay, this is great. Um, I'm hearing positive things, which is good. Nobody's <laughs> shouting at this framework, which is all right. Um, and then I think still to kind of the point is, as Sean was bringing up, the intention here is that there is kind of a, a more um, focused look at each one of these goals. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm looking at research excellence and correlating open source activity with research funding. Okay, so that's what this slide three is, research excellence, with the goal of correlating um, open source activity with research funding, and then coming up with a series of questions that could be asked to help understand um, how well that goal is being achieved. So for example, which funded university projects are contributing to or maintaining open source? Zach, that might that be a was 4.6. What's that? Zach had an earthquake, it registers 4.6. I don't know what you're talking about. There was just it's an earthquake Jack. apparently uh, for Zach uh, oh. online. Yeah, oh. yeah. The um, first time ever that like my phone did this. I'm like, oh god. Um, but I should have known someone from Wisconsin already knew that I was okay. Well, I've got the last quake <laughs> app on my phone. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh. Okay. Sure. <laughs> that is that. I probably promise that's the first earthquake we've had uh, during a cast yeah. meeting. So. I think it is. <laughs> Um, okay, so oh, I, I, thanks for bringing that up. So the idea here is trying to, to create a set of questions that can help kind of achieve that goal. So again, the first one, um, which funded projects are contributing to or maintaining open source? This may or may not be a question that would be relevant in your particular context. Um, what funding agencies are supporting university open source work? So if you do have researchers, say within your university, um, that have um, funding sources, maybe understanding that relationship could be useful in your particular case. Um, and then which funding agencies have programs, for example, supporting open source work that might, again, these may or may not be relevant questions to you, but they help kind of achieve that goal of better understanding the relationship between open source and research funding. So these questions kind of feed into that goal. This is a common approach we use in chaos, this goal question metric approach. And then only then do we care particularly about the metrics that might be meaningful to help answer that, that particular question, feed into the goal and to address that and to support that function. Um, so you can see at this point, we have no metrics, which is always kind of our approach. We're actually metrics trailing because we don't want to just bring metrics forward um, with no real, uh, no real context. Richard, hello. I didn't even know you were here. You have your hand up. I joined late. I'm winterizing, so I have to stack all this firewood. So I'm listening. Um, I didn't see anyone here on the research software engineering community call this morning. It was 6 a.m. ET, so I didn't expect to see anyone here. That was mainly Australians, but, um, there's a workshop report coming out from the International Science Research Software Engineering funding workshop that happened a couple of weeks ago in Montreal, um, which may be useful for helping to talk about, I think, your final question, which is which funders have um, policy around open source software? Is that accurate? Yeah. Can you rephrase that for me? I may have missed it. 
Uh, what? Yeah, sure. Yeah, what funding agencies have programs supporting open source work? I think programs. Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, so I would suggest reaching out to Michelle Barker and asking her if that makes sense sure. as a question, because she probably okay. has more information. But that report's going to be coming out in a few weeks, and so that may change how that metric is worded. But it sounds good. No, that's fine. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that, Richard. Yeah. Based on what we're seeing, I think it's going to be pretty much all of them. Um, so the the policies are being updated, but the NIH made it clear that by um, immediate sharing of research data, they mean software too that's needed to make the data useful. So I think it's going to be across the board. Um, the other piece is that um, you may want to check in with your university research development office if you have one. Um, they work on cultivating um, proposal success, and um, they may not be as plugged into the role of open source software um, in um, judging the merits of proposals as you are. Um, so that might be a useful connection for you on your campus. Appreciate that, thank you. Um, okay, this is great, and and to, to these, to these points and, and to Richard, to your point too, like these may not be the perfect questions. This was kind of a, a work of about a month or two of just us kind of talk, talking through and trying to, to bring cohesion to this. So um, appreciate the comments. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Does, does anybody have questions about this this framework as to kind of how we're going about this? to ultimately develop, to Sean's point, metrics or metrics models that might be helpful to you in kind of supporting your discussions around these particular functions. Checking to make sure, okay. Um, Sorry, the, the only very minor thing I had I dropped in the chat also is yeah. just the first, on the first slide, the, you know, the, yeah. the title, and then when I look at what's going on, like some things, seem like the the functions or activities of like an office like the ospo itself and some yep. things seem like they're kind of uh about open source uh itself <laughs> it's um, that's fair yeah and uh i don't know that it matters that much but um you know if you're presenting this to someone you know i'm just thinking it would is this meant to be like trying to make the point about what's the role of something like an ospo or just open source in general and is it is there i don't know maybe worth an eye to think if it's mixing them in a way that might be confusing but i haven't really thought about it too much but no, i think I, we merged uh, scientific open source and university open source software groups uh, because there's there is an overlap but you're right there are clear distinctions in each area yeah, I guess I was so we, getting at the difference between like, is it the software itself or is it the 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 like the office that's helping promote it? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, that's a great point. And Richard, I see your hand up. I'm going to make one comment before you go, Richard. Um, we have been asked this. No, <laughs> you're 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 not the first person to ask us to kind of disambiguate these a bit. That. Um, there would be certain functions that would be focused on the OSPO and supporting questions that arise within the OSPO and others that are a bit more community centric for people that are thinking about, say, community management um, and those types of things. So a uh, point well taken and you're not the first one to bring it up. <laughs> I just haven't okay. separated them out. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, it's not that I'm just kind of asking myself to trying to think of through it. But... <laughs> but you are correct. You are reading it correctly. So um, Richard, did you have a comment as well? It you answered Richard. it. No, you, oh, you answered okay. it. So it's all good. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop my my share here. Um, I will. We have we stop at at ten to, so we stop in just about five minutes, um, just so you can all transition to your other meetings that might be starting <laughs> at the top of the hour. Um, I, I guess I just have one last question for folks. Was there was there anything that you were kind of hoping that we were talking about when you were coming to this meeting or was it really just, let's see what they're talking about <laughs> and we'll go from there. You know, was it was it the former or the latter or do you, because if there's something you're interested in, I'd, I'd love to hear about it or, you know, a, a problem that you're trying to solve. 
and, and maybe we can help. This would get back to some of the storytelling, I think, possibly. Okay. I guess we were looking at what's the, what are the top top level, you know, top of mind types of numbers, types of metrics that that, you know, maybe if there has been some agreement along the, along those lines, um, we want to make sure that we're we're following along in in that regard, but also looking for. Since, since since we are kind of starting this process here, and it sounds like a, a lot of folks on this call are also kind of in the starting phases. Um, not everyone, of course. Uh, you know, if we can all be going in the same, same direction, um, then I think that'll make it easier to to have those conversations and to to make those those uh, comparisons across the work that's happening. Okay, um, I appreciate that, and I think then joining now is a great time because we have a lot of room in that framework to kind of work out what those uh, metrics could be and even what the questions can be um, and what that framework can look like in the future. So thanks for that. Um, learn more about metrics, methods of assessing OSS community health. Okay, so Don, that is, <laughs> that is, I think, uh, Aim towards you if you want to make a comment on that. I don't know if you see Zach's comment in the chat. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's something that obviously we're we're focused on, and you know, right now we're in the process of trying to understand how the how the university needs are are different uh, for sure. But there, you know, there's some commonalities, right? I mean, my my approach to metrics is always what are you what are you trying to achieve as an organization. And how do you measure the things that tell you whether you're successful or not? So I would say if I was going to start, I would I would start with that because you know even even in this group, you're all going to have slightly different goals for your for your OSPA. Yeah. So what you'll what you'll need to measure is going to be a little bit a little bit different. But we you know we have some things. We have a starter health a project health metrics model which has four metrics that look at the the health of individual projects or repositories. That's also a good place to to start. And if you have questions, feel free to, to reach out in the, the Slack channels or um, feel free to reach out to me directly. If you have pointed questions, I'm happy to help. Thanks, Don. Yeah, I will definitely do that. Yeah. Um, I think for us, and I think it's not uncommon, um, diversity and inclusion is one of our top um, goals um, and doing it for real, not just talking about it or going to trainings once a year. Um, and, you know, our institution has provided resources to try to, you know, shift cultures, but really cultures come down to PIs and what they build in the lab locally. Um, so um, we're looking for ways to, for like, to build a well-meaning coalition of the willing and then, um, you know, have it not just be an administrative top-down type of approach, but like building local, healthy local cultures in labs over and over again and having those PIs influence each other. Cool. These are excellent. Um, great. And I, I will say this too, just in, as you mentioned, Zach, around um, DI or DEI, this is a big part of what we do in chaos as well. So we have a lot of metrics that are focused on um, event health, with respect to DEI and events. Um, and we're really starting to build out um, metrics around project project health and project DEI. Um, so these are very important to us as well. And we, just from a chaos perspective, we've worked with the Ford Foundation over the last, say, four years, um, particularly working on uh, DEI-related issues in open source. So happy to bring that forward as well. Cool. All right, as promised, we're at the end of time. Um, I, I just wanna say thank you everybody for coming today. This is really great. Yes, thank and you. I'd really like to kind of echo Bill's point is continuing to, to work together. We can build this narrative together and I think that'll be really beneficial for everybody so that we're not all working kind of in different directions. Um, so thank you again for being here and we meet every two weeks and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks nice everybody. Okay, bye. bye. Thank you.